Hello. Today we are going to talk about the state that we live in, North Carolina. Uh, so there's our state outline on this map, and there's a lot of symbols here that we will talk about as we go along. But first, I wanted to talk about our state flag. So every state has a flag, and this is what North Carolina's looks like. You might have seen it before. Uh, you might not have realized what it was uh, when it's flying on a flagpole. Uh, but our state flag is red, white, and blue with a little bit of yellow uh, writing there. And there's two dates that stick out on this flag. And I guarantee you that most adults that live in North Carolina do not know what these dates stand for, or what happened on these dates. So I'm going to tell you really briefly what they are. So that top date, May 20th, 1775, uh, was the day that some people in North Carolina signed a document called the Mecklenburg, Mecklenburg Declaration of Independence. And that was a full year before the colonies got together and signed the Declaration of Independence that you all may have heard of before that uh, freed the colonies from England. Uh, but some people in North Carolina a whole year before wrote their own declaration. The problem was the paper was lost for many, many years until the 1800s. So some people believe that this didn't actually happen. Uh, but here in North Carolina, the Mecklenburg Declaration of Independence is still uh, important to some people. And then the bottom date, April 12th, 1776, represents another document important to the state called the Halifax Resolves. And that is, again, another kind of declaration of independence when people in North Carolina got together and said, we want to be free from the King of England. Uh, so both of these dates, what you need to know is that they both represent freedom and independence and liberty from England. And that's what the colonies, that's what a lot of people in the colonies wanted. So that's the state flag. Here is the state seal. Every state also has a seal. A seal is kind of like a stamp that's put on important papers. Uh, so here's the seal of North Carolina. You'll notice that those two dates are on here again. So obviously pretty important. And then you'll notice these two figures, these two ladies. The one on the left in the blue, she is called Liberty. So again, this idea of freedom and independence. And then the lady in the pink is called Plenty, uh, P-L-E-N-T-Y. And she represents all the natural resources and crops that we have in North Carolina or that we can grow. You see all of the fruits and vegetables here. She's holding grain in her hand. Now in the background, we see the mountains all the way to the ocean because North Carolina has lots of different geography. And then at the very bottom, we see the state motto. The motto is kind of like a saying. And a lot of time the state's mottos are in Latin, which is a language a lot of people don't speak anymore. But this one, esse quam videri, it means to be rather than to seem. So to me, that's saying, North Carolina, this is what we are. This is what we have. We're not pretending to be anything that we are not. So that is the seal. Now let's talk a little bit about the geography of North Carolina. So there are three regions of North Carolina, the mountains, the Piedmont, and the coastal plains. And I marked where I am with a smiley face. I'm in Henderson County, which is in the mountains. And I also marked where our state capital is. Ooh, sorry, Raleigh is our state capital and it is marked by a diamond on here. So it's in the Piedmont, it's kind of in the center of the state. So let's talk a little bit about each of those regions. The Coastal Plains region is where the beach is. So if you've gone to a beach in North Carolina, you've gone to the Coastal Plains region. It's very flat, the soil is sandy, uh, but that's good for growing certain types of crops, including peanuts and tobacco and soybeans. So those are crops you might see growing in the Coastal Plains region. There's also a number of lighthouses out there. 
the Piedmont region is in the center of the state and it has our two biggest cities, Raleigh and Charlotte. Uh, there's a picture of Charlotte there. But before all these really big cities became even bigger, the Piedmont was known for textiles, which are fabrics that make our clothes and blankets and things like that. They were also known for furniture and they still are. There are some furniture makers in the Piedmont region. But now a lot of times the Piedmont is known as kind of the head of technology and innovation. So that's what that picture represents because in those big cities, you have lots of people that are working on research and technology and things like that. And then finally, you have the mountain region. That's where I am. That's where probably a lot of you are. Uh, so guess what? They have mountains there. And they, uh, we also have a lot of rivers and a lot of farming as well. Things that we farm, corn, apples, other crops. Uh, we also have minerals. Some of you might have been gem mining before where you go and get your little bucket and you try to find uh, the gems in there. And then also Christmas trees. There's a lot of Christmas tree farms in the mountains. So that's a little bit about the regions. Now we're gonna talk about the symbols of North Carolina. So each state has picked things that are important to their state. And they have a state bird and a state flower and a state tree. So we're gonna play a little game where you're gonna guess what the state symbol is. So for example, what do you think the state bird of North Carolina is? And you can either say it out loud if you're watching this, you can hold up a finger uh, for the correct number. What do you think the state bird is? The state bird is actually the cardinal, number four. Uh, so this picture is of a male cardinal. The males are the red ones. The females are a little bit more camouflaged because they have to sit on their nest all day protect their eggs and their babies. So if a predator sees a bright red thing in a tree, it's gonna know to go there. But the females have more brown on them so they can kind of camouflage better. Okay, what about the state flower? What do you think the state flower is? The state flower is number three, the dogwood. Now this flower is pretty unique because it does not grow just straight up in the ground. It grows on a tree called the dogwood tree. The dogwood tree is not our state tree, but it is the state flower. So uh, a little bit confusing. We'll, we'll talk about the state tree here in a minute, but the state flower, the dogwood usually is white. Uh, sometimes it can be pink or even red, and it comes out in the early springtime is when it blooms on the trees. Okay, what about the state drink, the state beverage? This is a tricky one. So most people usually guess number four, sweet tea, but it's actually number one. Milk is the state drink of North Carolina. Uh, we have a lot of dairy farms in North Carolina that provide milk, and then people in North Carolina really like to drink milk as well. Okay, I got a couple more for you, or three more, I think. So what do you think the state insect is? The state bug, the butterfly, the lightning bug, the honeybee, or the ladybug? The state insect is actually the honeybee. And I know some people might be scared of anything that stings. Honeybees rarely sting you unless you make them mad. They're not like wasps or hornets that will just sting if you walk outside. Honeybees, their main job is to go from their hive to the flowers to get uh, nectar, to take it back to their hive and make honey. So if you like honey, you have these guys to thank. Okay, what about the state mammal? And this one can be tricky too. You have to remember that when states were picking their symbols, they, they tend to pick something that is seen throughout the whole state, not just in one region. So a lot of people usually pick bear for this one because in the mountains we have bears, but you're not gonna find a lot of bears in the coastal plains region. So that wouldn't really represent our state very well. 
what you are gonna find in all three regions is the gray squirrel, and that is the state mammal. There's a lot of those. Okay, I have one more for you, the state vegetable. And this one fooled me too the first time. The state vegetable is actually the sweet potato. North Carolina grows more sweet potatoes than any of the other 49 states. North Carolina, there's 50 states, so it is the leading grower of sweet potatoes. Now, let's talk about a few other ones that you don't need to guess on. The state uh, reptile is the eastern box turtle. The state mineral is gold. And some people might have heard of the California gold rush where people went to California to find gold. But the first gold was actually found in North Carolina. The state sport is stock car racing. The state dog is the plot hound. Here's the plot hound here. The state fruit is the scuppernog grape. It's a very specific type of grape. And then the state tree is the pine tree. We have a lot of those. Now, besides the symbols, some important things or famous things were invented in North Carolina, including two uh, sodas that you might have heard of, Cheerwine and Pepsi. Krispy Kreme donuts were invented in North Carolina. If you've ever had a cold, your parents might have put this Vicks Vapo Rub on your chest to help you breathe better. That was invented here. Putt-Putt was invented in North Carolina, in Fayetteville, North Carolina. And then this one always confuses me. Texas Pete hot sauce was not invented in Texas. It was invented in North Carolina. But I guess Texas sounds hotter than North Carolina Pete hot sauce. And then this picture you might recognize. You might know what this is. This is the first airplane that was flown. It was flown in North Carolina at a place called Kitty Hawk in the Coastal Plains region. And the people that were flying it were the Wright brothers, Orville and Wilbur Wright. And we have them to thank for now we can get on a plane and go anywhere in the world. We also have some famous people that were born in North Carolina. There's a lot of them. I just picked a few. We actually have two presidents from North Carolina. You might not have ever heard of these guys, and that's okay. Um, they're less known than people like George Washington or Abraham Lincoln. Uh, but the 11th president, James K. Polk, came from North Carolina. He was born here. And then the 17th president, Andrew Johnson, was born here. He's the one that came right after Abraham Lincoln was assassinated as president. Andrew Johnson took over. And then here's some other people. Now, I don't have a picture of her because this was long before cameras, but the first person born in the new world in what we call America, the first person born to the English colonist was from North Carolina. She was born in North Carolina. Her name was Virginia Dare. Now, she was not the first person born in North Carolina. Remember, there had been Native Americans living here for thousands of years, and they had babies born here. But Virginia Dare was the first English born, and uh, she lived at a place called Roanoke Island in the Coastal Plains region. You might have heard of Roanoke Island as the Lost Colony because the colonists that settled there all disappeared. Some of their people went back to England to get supplies. When their ship got back to North Carolina, all the people were gone, and we still don't know what happened to them hundreds of years later. The man in the middle, you might recognize from an old TV show. His name is Andy Griffith, uh, the Andy Griffith Show, and he was born in North Carolina. Uh, the man in the car, you can't really see him, but he's driving the car, was Dale Earnhardt. Uh, he was a famous NASCAR driver from North Carolina. And then this guy wasn't actually born in North Carolina, but we claim him because he moved here when he was very young, like four years old. And that's Michael Jordan, and he's a famous basketball player. 
But there are a ton more famous uh, people born in North Carolina. So see if you can find someone that you know famous or you know of uh, that was born in North Carolina. And then my challenge for you all today is I want you all to pretend that you are creating your own state based on your life and what you like. So I want you to come up with your own symbols, your favorite bird, your favorite flower, your favorite drink. And to kind of get you thinking, I created some symbols based on the farm. So if Historic Johnson Farm here where I am was a state, these are some of the things that the, these are some of the symbols. The state tree of the farm would be the hemlock tree because the Johnsons planted a lot of hemlocks and we still have some of them today. The state uh, vegetable would be corn. They grew a lot of corn. The famous people born here, and they actually weren't born here, but they moved here when they were very young, were Vernon and Leander Johnson, the Johnson brothers. They lived here and then they gave their farm to Henderson County Public Schools so that students could come and learn about what life was like in the past. Now the state animal, I could not pick just one because we have donkeys and goats here. Our donkeys are named Lester and April, and our goats are named Riley and Oliver. So they would have to share. The state animal would be the goat and donkey. The state flower would be the daffodil. If you come to the farm in March or even April, there are so many daffodils here. Now, I don't think the state dessert is a real thing, but I made it a thing. So if there was a state dessert, the farm's it would be the pound cake that uh, Vernon and Leander's mom, Sally Johnson, made because people still talk about how great her pound cake was. And then the state bird would be the bluebird. We have lots of bluebird boxes that the bluebirds always make homes in in the spring and lay their eggs. So that's an example. I want you all, if you have time, to think about your own state and what is important to you and what represents you. And if you really want to get creative, make a flag, design a state flag, either on paper or on the computer, and I'd love to see it. So thank you for tuning in.